I've got about an hour. I'll let you know now. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Uh, we have a load of questions. I put up on my social media to say who's coming on, and then people post questions up, and we run through them and see where it takes us. It can be quite yeah. random at times. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> right. Awesome. Folks, welcome back to Brew Time. This week, we've got Rob Hamilton, also known as Motofields. How are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Now, awesome. you're over in Oz, aren't you? Is it Melbourne? Is that right? Uh, that is correct, yeah. Right. Well, regular chilly, listeners chilly of yours. Melbourne. Is it chilly? <laughs> oh, go on. What it's, temperature is uh, yeah. it? I've got my Benny on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? chilly to us is like nothing to you guys. <laughs> I'm like, here you go, damn it, riding in like seven degree weather and you guys are just like, oh, seven degrees, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. I'm Scottish, you know what I mean? That's yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, regular listeners, viewers of this, well, it, it's called Brew Time. My name's Bruce, but obviously I normally have a beer when we chat, but it's half past 10 in the morning here, so I'm on a coffee. Uh, <laughs> but if, you have a, if you've got a drink to crack on with you, feel free. I just got water. I'm going to ride home still. Right. <laughs> Slange to you, here's to your help. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, Rob, you are a, a motorcycle-based uh, YouTuber, but you're a professional photographer, aren't you? Is that where you started? Um, yeah, I guess so. Uh, like, I've only been I've only been a photographer for like the last four years, so like not oh, that right. long. Yeah, even just calling myself like a professional, I'm still just like, yeah, maybe I'm there, but I'm do I'm doing professional shoots, so like I guess you know, I guess um, I'm sort of there. <laughs> So, so tell a us a little bit about musician. yourself then. Okay, so um, or I'm, a, I'm a musician. Uh, well, before all this, I'm actually an auto electrician. So I started nice. doing my apprenticeship, uh, became an auto electrician, and then I was sort of like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I'm, I felt, you know, my my creative um, lifestyle was not, you know, not reached yet. So then I started yeah. doing music, which is what I wanted to be. A full time musician was my dream. Um, so I did that. I performed on X Factor. I did lots of stuff with music, toured around um, with uh, like Megan Trainer, all about that bass. If you know right. that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I played with her on like uh, live national television, and I did played with a lot of other people on TV as well, which is awesome. Oh, wow. um, and then I did that for like eight years. I was I was gigging, touring, and having a great time. And then I just felt like. Again, I was just like my creative, I don't know, juices weren't flowing as much as they could be. I was sort of like in Australia, like the glass ceiling's pretty low. You know what I mean? If I wanted to expand on my musical career, I would have had to have moved to like LA or something, which is what I was mm. looking into. Um, but then like COVID kicked in and everything. And by this time I bought myself a camera. I was just like, I'm going to buy myself a camera and just, just play around with this thing and see how we go. And um, I fell in love with the damn thing. Um, and then COVID kicked in and then that's when I had this whole backlog of, um, um, of footage. Cause I saw like, on the camera, there's a, there's a record option, like a filming option. So uh -huh. I'm like, okay, so I'm taking photos, you know, and I'm enjoying this, but also flick it over to the, to the filming side. And I was just starting to muck around with that. Just thinking, you know, what the hell can I do with video now? Um, and then I started watching some, um, you know, some vloggers and everything, Peter, Peter McKinnon being one of them. Yeah. Um, and I thought, hey, this is like, you know, he's an inspirational dude. I'm sure like, you know, 99% of people can agree. Um, and so then when COVID happened, I was just like, all right, time to start learning how to edit video footage, you know? And then I started, that's how I started Moto Feels, like YouTube channel anyway. Mm -hmm. And, and, and in the bike are. side of things, <laughs> have, you, have you always been a biker or are you new to biking? No, I started riding in 2014. Right. Um, and that was the thing when I was on tour with all the boys and everything, we were talking about motorbikes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know what? It would actually be pretty cool to ride. <laughs> um, and so I knew no one, like no one in my my scene, no musicians ride because I play double bass. And if, if you break even just a finger, like a fracture of finger, your yeah. whole playing style can just be ruined. Your career's over, basically. Um, so none of my mates rode any bikes. So I was just a full on loner, just learning everything as I go. Um, I bought myself a a one thousand dollar SRV two fifty, and it was. I still. I wish I still had it. I, don't, I wish I just didn't sell it. Um, <laughs> fantastic bike. I love that thing to death. Um, and and yeah, and then I, I built that into a little cafe racer. Mm -hmm. And because um, I've been having a background of being an auto electrician, I sort of you know I know my way around tools and everything. Um, and yeah, and then I fell in love with motorcycles. Awesome. Um, so you, when you started riding, were you over? Was that when you were Sydney based? That's correct. Yeah, I only moved to Melbourne yeah. just recently in January. Right. How how do you find the the biking scene 
well, Australia in general, but but particularly over in Sydney. I I, I stayed in Sydney for not a lot, like a week or so when I was when I was travelling, and um, it was really strong. I had lots of lots of Aussie bikers getting in touch, and you know you didn't really. Yeah. It didn't to me. It didn't feel like it took very long to get out of the city limits, and already I was into some mountains. And there's a viewpoint ah, that awesome. looks over looks over the ocean where um, I think it's Down south of Cliff? Sydney. Yeah, I think, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cliff. Stand, that's Stanwell the one. Tops. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my favorite. Uh, Riding through the national, you would have gone through the Royal National Park. That's, that's literally my favorite spot to ride. Yeah, yeah. It's everyone, everyone took me there to that bit. No matter who I met, they all did that same run. I was like, oh yeah, ah, this has yeah, got to be the right. must be the biking run. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah how do you find it over there? Uh, how do I find it? Yeah, the, the, the bacon scene. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's incredible. Like, Sydney's Sydney's amazing. Melbourne, I feel like even Melbourne might be a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Not to be biased or anything. Um, or maybe, I, I don't know. I feel like I've even my followers, uh, they're more, like, they're situated in Melbourne more. I mean, Melbourne's mm. known to be a bit more creative as well. It's a bit of a creative yeah. city. Um, I feel really attached to Melbourne more than I do Sydney. Um right. And uh, yeah, and I don't know if that's part of the reason why I feel like Melbourne's a little bit more connected with the motorcycle scene. Um, but Sydney's great. Australia's great as well. Like, obviously, there's like there's YouTubers in Australia, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, like yeah, it's a it's a developing scene. Absolutely, it's growing. Awesome. Um, I'm I'm really sorry if, if I interrupt. There's there's like a second or so lag on the Zoom call. I, I get it quite can, often when we do the, the Zoom calls. It. It's, it's yes, quite annoying. Wish we could yeah. do them face to face, but you know, uh, <laughs> other side of the world, you know. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. <laughs> uh, right. I tell you what. Seeing as seeing as we were sort of not limited, but seeing as we've got the hour, how about we go straight into the questions because they they can take us down all different sort of avenues. Ah, sure. Yeah, what yeah, we yeah. chat about. Right. Lovely job. Absolutely. So, First off, folks, we'll head to the clan over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash teapot one. First one, Charlie Callard. How you doing, Charlie? I've watched a couple of Rob's videos and they're fantastic. So I have a couple of questions. If oh here, this is what I mean, Rob. If aliens came down, what favorite bit of tech would you show them and what fast food would you take them out for? <laughs> okay. Holy crap. <laughs> welcome. Welcome Alien. to Brew Time. <laughs> yeah. Um, alien tech. What do I have? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, maybe I guess I guess it'll have to be this. This is this is a helmet aliens would would want. I reckon to record their intergalactic uh, travels. I don't know if you've heard of this helmet. This is called a foresight. It's a smart Fors helmet. Yes, I've just started seeing them advertised over here. There's been some uh, press launches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're just releasing their Mark One S, which I'm reviewing at the moment. Actually, I've cool. got it downstairs. This is their the Mark One. This is the very first one. Right. Um, the full smart helmet. It's got a camera built in. It's got an LED bar at the top. It's got speakers built in. Um, you know, like you know, uh, SD card, micro USB, charging port, and everything like that. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. It's all. It's fully decked out. It's, it's what's actually, the What's the camera quality like? It's it's 1080. Um, it's okay. not really it's not really like obviously they do have a lot of competition with like you know every single action camera brand out there. Yeah. Um, it's 1080. There's no stability on it, but the mm. whole idea is literally to basically have a dash cam. So you turn you put the helmet on, you turn it yeah. on, it's instantly recording straight away, and like yeah. with no no clutter, you don't have to mount a GoPro up or you're not doing anything else to modify the helmet. It's Very all tight. built in. It's actually. The um the battery on the inside is all part of the structural integrity of the helmet wow. as well. So without it, it's actually weaker. Um, and that's sort of like a floating sort of mount as well. So if you do have an accident, that thing will it's it's sort of like all shock absorbed. Mm -hmm. And when they replace the shell, they actually just take the unit out of the old helmet and put it into the new one. So it saves right. you like six hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, so it's very clever. It's a very clever design. And yeah, that's the I've... whole idea uh, with it as well. Like you've got speakers built in as well, so you can listen to music. Mm. It's all just like one helmet that has sort of like a cardo or something yeah. built in. Like you've got a microphone in there so you can talk to people and record like vlogs if you want to do some vlogging. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, you know, it's it's just the, the one-stop shop. If you want to just a, a helmet with a camera built in, this is the one. That's very interesting. Yeah, I've seen, I've yeah. seen them. They've just done like the press day for them. Uh, over here, uh, I wasn't invited. No offense, <laughs> but um, yeah, they've, they've, they've just done like a, a press day over here. I saw them on the socials and stuff. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see to see what the what what reviews they get for sure. Uh, okay, yeah, then, um, yeah absolutely. Yeah, 
I'm fast food. What fast food would you take the life for? Fast food. Oh gosh, I don't know. Or what? What food? What 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 food floats your boat? Just any food. <laughs> I don't know. Pizza. <laughs> but aliens come to planet Earth and you take them out for a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> with pineapple on it I don't know <laughs> there you go yeah yeah <laughs> right okay then what would I take them out for um, god she was what would I take an alien out for do you know I'm just a big fan of nachos I'm just like there's me sliding you off for the pizza yeah nachos just chilly nachos <laughs> love it yeah nice and easy yeah. we'll have a beer and have a chat <laughs> absolutely um, yeah sounds good Charlie's got a second question. He's looking at upgrading his current cheap action cam to a GoPro Hero 7 Black as it's fairly inexpensive now. Have either of you got any pros or cons with this one you could share? Now, what what GoPro do you use? Is that the 7 you use? I use the 7. I've got the 10. I know you Uh, use the 10. I do know, yeah. Yeah. I've I've had nothing but issues with the 10. I can't stand it. Yeah. It's literally just so much off. Like, I'm ready to just bloody throw it out. (laughs) Do you use do you use these the enduro batteries the white enduro batteries? I do not, <laughs> mate. I I had nothing but problems with GoPros. I was the same as you. I was like, if this if this ten doesn't work because I had the seven. Well, I've I've had them from the one, but I, I was like, sure. the seven was nothing but problems with me. Then I got wow. the nine, and the nine was intermittent, but just not reliable. The ten came out. I took the gamble, got it, but it was the same time these enduro batteries came out. So I bought a couple of them, and genuinely with the blue standard batteries i have nothing but problems in my nine and my ten when i put the white enduros in almost almost foolproof they've been brilliant Whoa, that's interesting okay I, d- I don't know why but but they're just they're and just they're, solid and they're from gopro as well yeah 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 uh-huh they're, they're yeah. exactly the same price as the blue ones they're just called i think they're called enduro batteries interesting yeah and and they work almost almost uh, foolproof with them nearly yeah, I've had a okay. couple of issues when it's been pissing down with rain you know and I've I use the the big you see I use the big the medium, medium oh, yeah, and, yeah yeah that's right yeah and oh, I think as well, rain, yeah. rain can get in there can't it if you if you're out in hot heavy heavy rain so I have a few issues there Absolutely. but normally no problem um yeah, yeah well so the seven do you have any problems with that I love my seven man like really? the only issue I might have um is uh, what issue do I have? <laughs> uh, sometimes I just I go to hit record and it just doesn't want to power on. So I have to like yeah. pull over, take it out, pull the battery out, put it back yeah. in, and then it's it's good to go again. But yeah. it records all the time. So the main issue I was having with the 10 is I'd hit record, you hear it go beep, 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 it's powered on, we're rolling. Yeah. And then um, I go to hit record again to stop it. And I can see the red light flashing in my vision mirror. Yeah. Um, but it's just not doing anything. It's going to pull over, and then I pull the battery out, and then it recorded one second of the footage. So yeah. that whole – well, any time that I'm recording with my Hero 10, I'm like, is it actually recording or is this a gotcha. massive waste? And yeah. so then that just put me off. I couldn't use it anymore. I was wasting too much too much time and energy, yeah. Uh, I was exactly the same with the 9 and the 10 with the blue batteries. That The only time I have that similar issue now is, like I said, if it gets wet, so if I'm out in heavy rain – I that's when I I start to notice you get corrupt files, uh, which can't you can't always repair. You know I, I use is it Wondershare? Uh, yeah, Wondershare repair it. I use if I get a corrupt okay. file, and it's probably I would say it's about like a 80 percent success rate on on fixing corruptions. But sometimes it can't. You just lose all the footage, don't you? But um, yeah, that's yeah, right. it, it's generally a lot better with those those white batteries, man. I'd I'd definitely give them a bash. Okay, yeah, I'll give them a crack. Apparently, even the um, yeah, the SD cards. What what SD cards do you use? Um, I use the the genuine SanDisk. Um, the oh, SanDisk. Yeah, yeah two fifty six. Yeah, just the ones that are on the site. Yeah, yeah, like the Extreme Pro or whatever. Yeah, I always buy them direct from SanDisk because there's so many counterfeits out there now, isn't there? Like if you go on Amazon, uh, there's yeah. so many counterfeit ones there. So uh, I just, sure. Yeah, I just make sure I get the genuine top speed SanDisk two fifty six gig ones. And they seem yeah. to be they seem to be fine. Yeah, okay, um, cool. 
One one thing, Charlie. One thing I would say with the Hero Seven depends how you're going to capture your 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 audio, mate, and your lid. If you're going to capture the audio via the GoPro, obviously you need that that adapter, and then it's a question of making sure that the the connection from your lav mic to the adapter, and then the connection from the adapter to the GoPro, you've got to make them as solid as possible because any movement, and you'll start getting like clicks and pops and cackles and stuff. Ah, there you go. That's these are these are hard to find now. The top the top mount. I've only yeah. had the one, and I love this one. Yeah. Um, you just move it over slightly, and then you can just hit record from there. Gotcha. Um, but then yeah, and then I use the purple panda mic straight in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, I've never yeah. seen that one where you can actually move it across at the top. Uh, yeah, you can just slide it across. Ah, the whole thing moves across. You don't, have to, you don't have to alter the original case or anything like that. You know. Right. Um, so it's just one that, yeah. So obviously, if you guys are just listening, you, um, it just it just literally slides onto the top of the case, and then you just have your little door open on the side, and then mm-hmm. the um, the mic adapter just plugs into the side, the little USB C on the side. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and then away you go, and it's Josh, light as well. Yeah. So you need to watch like in in rain and things like that. Do you do you weatherproof that that open door? Do you put anything in there to block it up? I just. I just try and I, I just don't like I don't ride in too much rain. Gotcha, <laughs> like with gotcha. the light rain, yeah. But if it's gonna be pouring down, then I'll just unplug it, put the door on, and I'm just not gonna talk. Yeah. I'll just capture some footage, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll go you know, into like, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, yeah, sure. okay. your ASMR <laughs> uh, channel, brilliant. Uh, sick. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we don't we don't really have that option over here, mate, to to not ride in the rain. It's like <laughs> you'll probably you'll probably ride three weekends a year if you do that over here. Wow. <laughs> Cheers, uh, cheers, Charlie, for that, pal. Next one, Mike Whiting. G'day, guys. As us Brits are probably going to suffer some high 30 to 40 degree summer days on the odd occasion in the future, what do you Aussies recommend gear-wise to make riding more comfortable? Right. Um, So, yeah, no clothes. (laughs) (laughs) If you wear layers, don't wear layers. Um, Yeah, look, I, I sweat heaps. And uh, now I've, I've been trying so many different things to stop myself from sweating. Um, basically, it's it's more about moving. You want to keep on moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know in Sydney, um, traffic is just such a thing. You're always in traffic. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing worse than sitting in the blistering sun with all your gear on, with the hot road, heat coming up, with a truck park next to you, with its yeah. fan blowing all its heat on you as well. I literally, there was a time when I was in traffic for about, I don't know, maybe like seven minutes. And I started getting all lightheaded and I was literally about to pass out. <laughs> like just that quick. And it was very like a 38 degree day. Yeah. Um, so I guess like uh what is it? Is it that I don't I don't own it, but I've I've been wanting to to get some. I think it's Nox Nox mm-hmm. armor. Yeah. Um they do that real lightweight, really, you know, just breathable yeah. armored gear. Oh, actually. Uh, hang on, I'll show you something. No worries. I have something here. This is Rob's just wore. popping down in his office here. I have to grab and stuff. <laughs> um, this is what I wore for the Around the Backyard tour. This ah, is the one yeah. with, um, when I went we were out around New South Wales and I almost got heat streak with that as well. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I wore literally a, a windproof jacket, bad choice. So I bought Sheesh. this, I picked this up for like 120 bucks and it's literally just a mesh with armor in it. And yeah, that, yeah. this is like wearing nothing. You feel the breeze go right through you. Um, so yeah, literally anything like this, Mm-hmm. If you're if you're riding in heat like that, yeah. So it's um, like a mesh uh, body up for people that are listening. It's like a mesh body armor sort of jacket. Really, everything's all built in. Neck knocks do them a lot of motocross type stuff. They they do that now as well, don't yeah. they? That sort yeah, of yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's way, it's way better quality than this. Was just a cheap one that I saw at the one motorbike store in the middle of gotcha. New South Wales. Gotcha. <laughs> so I jumped on it. Uh, when I when I was in Oz, it was 2013. I was in Oz, and I remember. I was coming from I was coming from the north, so I'd I'd come from East Timor into Darwin, and then I had to make my way from Darwin oh, all the way down. Oh God, what's the? Is it Stuart Highway? You head yeah. down, and then you can either carry on going south all the way past like Uluru and stuff, or you can head left and head towards. Is it Townsville? Right over in the. Is that yeah, right? Right over there. on. Yeah. 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 Then I remember I went through Christmas Day. I went through a, a little a town called. Um, Oh God, mining town, Mount Isa. Is that right, Mount Isa up the north? Time for a quick shout out to this week's sponsors, who are 
Enov. Now, Enov specialise in motorcycle dash cam systems. You'll probably see the vids on uh, my channel. They've got the single camera, the C5. They've got dual camera, which are the K series, the K3 and the K5. K3 is 1080, K5 is 4K front, 1080 rear. Both uh, the K3 and K5 have an external mic, which you can even wire up into your helmet and vlog with if you want. Uh, if you look at my California Superbike School Day vids, the audio, the onboard audio is all via the Innov K5 system. They've also got uh, GPS tracking. They've got an external remote so you can lock footage as you go. They'll do that automatically anyway, should they detect any sudden movement. They've got parking modes on them. So when that's activated, even when your bike is left unattended and switched off, say you're a bike calf or park it up in a town or something like that, if the bike moves at all, then it'll automatically kick in and it'll start recording. So hopefully you'll get that car that hits your bike or, or anyone that does anything to your bike. As long as they're in front of those cameras, you'll capture them. Great system, folks. Um, invaluable in terms of any accidents for insurance because the first thing your insurance is going to ask is, is there CCTV or witnesses? And if you have one of these in of systems fitted, then you're covered. Providing you're in the right, you're totally covered. Well worth getting, folks. Head to uh, the link down below. I've got the in of UK website link down below. So if you're listening to the show notes, check that out. If you're watching the vid, have a look in the description it is a referral link that just lets in of know you've come from me which helps me massively in terms of the sponsorship it shows them they're getting bang for their buck if you use the code teapot t-e-a-p-o-t then you'll get uh, i think it's five percent off any of the in of cameras and if you use the link to the Techologic website they are the one that do like the DC1 and XV1 helmet cameras. If you use the code Teapot, you'll get 5% off them as well. So a huge thank you to Innov for all their support. We are also sponsored by Ultimate Add-ons. Ultimate Add-ons, they specialize in uh, mobile phone and action camera mounting solutions for bikes, for push bikes, that sort of stuff. They provide dustproof, uh, drop proof, really rugged cases for your phones, as well as a multitude of different mounting solutions for those phone cases and action cameras, things like GoPros, DJIs, all that sort of stuff, Insta 360s. The great bits of kit, folk, folk. The great bits of kit, folks, even when your phone is inside one of these cases, uh, you can still use the phone, you can still use the cameras, obviously, as long as you keep the lens and everything clean. Great things, folks. I have never had any issues with vibration affecting my phone's camera when I use the Ultimate Add-on systems. I use the Helix strap mount. It's basically like a ratchet strap, really easy to fit. I can fit it to almost any bike I've ever taken out for a review. Great bits of kit. If you head to ultimateaddons.com and if you use the code TPOT110, so TPOT1 with the number 10 at the end, then you will get 10% off their range. Massive thanks to Ultimate Adults. Let's get back to the chat with Rob. Um, I'm not sure. I think it was Mount Isa. Mount Isa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I remember it was, I, 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 I was doing it on a sports bike on a Jixa and I was wearing like a two-piece leather suit. And I just remember thinking, Jesus, this is hot. This is like, <laughs> this is really hot. And then... Um, <laughs> oh I stopped. I like I, I bought myself my Christmas dinner at a petrol station. It was like a sandwich and a and a bottle of lemon. I can't remember what it was, Iron Brew or something. And um, I stopped in this layby, and they had a they had like a big thermometer in the oh, layby, right. and it said okay. like this this spot marks the. From what I remember, it said this spot marks the the highest ever recorded temperature in Australia, and wow. and I've got it in my head that it was fifty odd degrees. But I tried googling it last night. And it's not. It's like it's like just under fifty, I think. And it wasn't even really? Mount Isa. But I remember. I remember in my head there was this thermometer, and it was like highest ever recorded temperature, something like fifty four or fifty three degrees. And today's temperature is, and it was one degree less than it. And I remember it was like fifty two oh, yeah. degrees. And I just remember thinking, "Holy shit, that'll be why." Like you couldn't breathe. You know, you if, yeah, if you rode right. with your visor up, you, you couldn't do it. Your face just it, dried. It so you eyes. had to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
You had to put the visor down, and then it was just so hot. <laughs> it's just horrible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. even with the, the hot air just hitting you, it does yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah, there was no way of cooling down at all. It was horrible. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, that Okay, cheers for that one, Mike. Next one, Adam B. Hello to both of you. Any biking superstitions or habits you would like to admit? I'll only ever get on the bike from the same side as the side stand. Seeing anyone throw their leg over from the opposite side looks plain odd. I get on the bike any side. Do, do you? Or... Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, sometimes it feels a bit funny to get on the wrong side, on the different side. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, it's wearing wearing this ring. So my, my dad rides motorcycles mm -hmm. and when i have this on i just feel like i've you know he's you know sort of protecting me i guess gotcha. I, don't know, I don't know like i'm not superstitious but I, like for me i don't know just i'm just like okay protected and then mum's mum got me this ring here so then i've just yeah. got them both with me sort of thing oh man that's so nice it's just it's just my yeah that's just my yeah. little thing which i've never mentioned to anybody actually <laughs> <laughs> no now we all know um, yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't think i've got any i don't I can't think of any. Anyway, no, I don't think I've got any at all, Adam. Yeah, okay. uh, right, next one. Harley, how's it, guys? Two questions. What do you think is the difference between living and existing? Ooh. Oh, uh, deep, deep. Um, so, yeah, so existing is literally, I feel like that's when you're not enjoying your journey. You're not enjoying yeah. your life. You're not, yeah. you're not doing the things that you want to do or achieve. Um, and then living is obviously you're, you're living it. You're actually living your life. You're doing what you want to do. You're being, you are where you want to be. That's, that's my interpretation of yeah, yeah. existing or living. Yeah, me, me too. I think living is, is making use of whatever opportunities you have around you to, to enjoy your life, to, to experience new things, be happy and, and, you know, like value your friends and family. And I think Absolutely. I think the old the older I get, the more I realize the importance of of friends and family. Whereas before it was like, well, they're always going to be they're my mates, they're my family, they'll always be there. Sadly they'll not. And and I think as you get a yeah. bit older, you, you sort of start to realise that, don't you? And it's like, right, let's make let's make use of whatever time you get with yeah, people. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Definitely. Uh second question, do you sometimes compare yourself to other people? Got a hundred percent. Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's, just, that's that's pretty. That's pretty normal. Yeah. How how do you find it? Like with now with your sort of life, your career being on social media, do you find any pressure from that, or do you find yourself you put pressure on yourself now that you're like a YouTuber? I definitely put way more pressure on myself. I need to. Um, I feel like this is like I think even with with you as like with every YouTuber is to you're doing YouTube for a reason. You know what I mean? Like it's doing yeah. something that you love and to not make that feel like a job. You know what I mean? Like, like, Oh, I have to do this. And like, sometimes it does. Like it's only going to be natural. You're not going to be like, you know, just jacked all the time. Like you always, we ebb and flow, you know, mm -hmm. ups and downs all the time. Um, but I think uh, for me, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest thing for me personally is just to remember why you're doing this. Mm -hmm. you know and to to be in the moment and to uh, yeah and to enjoy enjoy doing it yeah absolutely i i've i've been guilty i i went full time at this well literally just before lockdown just before covid hit that 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 month really is when i left my previous job and um yeah you, you you definitely do. It was weird times, wasn't it for those two years but you still absolutely. you still put a lot of pressure on yourself you know the I, th I think maybe your own your own expectations your, your own um yeah your own expectations i think they're maybe that's what i battled with i think initially was like okay i i need i need to be creating this amount of content i need to make sure that i'm growing this amount of subscribers and getting this amount of likes and i need to keep the engagement high and do you know what as you said it's it's ebbs and flows isn't it it's just like youtube yeah. is ebbs and flows there's times during the year and where you get a massive spike just naturally and then there's other times where it just drifts off yeah yeah, and then uh, yeah, not looking too much into it as well. Like, I know like yeah. analytics not that help yeah. and like all the engagement, all that sort of stuff. But yeah. then, I, like we'll we'll come to it with the whole camping thing. Like it's almost like it just it just doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like literally, just make the content you want to make in the way that you want to make it, and be your natural self. And then yeah. it'll it just don't don't think about it too much. I, I yeah. know I'm an overthinker. I'm like a, I'm like a critical overthinker. I'm thinking of like 
how I can plan this next shoot to make it all epic and all that. And literally yeah. the visions I have in my head are, are done in Hollywood. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. I can't do that by myself. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's keeping it simple and enjoying, enjoying the process for sure. Yeah, we over over here in the UK, we have um, there's a there's a, a sort of little group of us moto vlogger types on YouTube who we're all roughly around about the same age. There's me, Missingdon Flyer, Lamb Shop Rides, another guy, Richie Vida, and we we sort of have all grown our channels roughly around about the same time. Obviously, TMS way way higher than he's got like quarter of a million subs and stuff. But they always laugh at me because I like I overcomplicate everything like even my editing i totally overcomplicate it and i've probably got i've got one of the smallest channels compared to them and i get like the, the least amount of views really compared to them because i do like trip focused videos most of the time i don't really That's do right. yeah yeah, um, yeah you know what i mean and, and and they're like you know what why are you spending days editing you know, like I mean, if I was spending five or six days editing like a 20 minute vid and, and they were like, God, it takes me, you know, takes them a day, maybe one camera, two right. cameras, boom. And, yeah. and it's, I found it really hard to like, because no one notices, nobody notices the work that you're putting into an edit unless they, nope. unless they know themselves that, oh my God, that takes a bit of time. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah uh, absolutely. absolutely. It's hard. It's, it's hard, isn't it? To bring, to sort of bring, your own expectation is that expectation is that the right word to bring your own sort of expectations i don't think that's the right word to bring the uh work that's involved in a vid what you think that vid deserves to bring that down a couple of levels and just and just get the content out because it's still acceptable and most like 98 percent of the people out there will watch it whether whether you've put five days of work into it or two days of work into it they'll, yeah. they'll watch that they won't notice yeah. much yeah I, I find that very hard though just to on my own quality assurance thing i find it quite hard just to let I it go put it out. yeah yeah because <laughs> it's like the other there, channels with just literally a gopro and i'm just yeah. like what i'm doing so much I've yeah got a drone shot and i've got all these amazing angles and everything <laughs> And then, like you said, you no, look at no. analytics, and the second the drone comes in, boom, it all drops off. You're like, yeah, that's right. It's the best bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> right, that was a nice no, one, Harley. Really Cheers for that question, pal. Next one, Martin yeah, Yoxel. Yeah. Sorry if I'm flying through these, mate, but normally, like, some of these go on for, like, three hours. So I'm like, I'm conscious we need to push uh, through yeah, the questions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh, uh, next one, Martin Yoxel. Good morning, evening, day. Is it easier just to say good day? Yeah, that'll do. Good day. Love good day. watching good your day. trip videos and the splinter vid videos of silent camping. Who knew watching a bloke pitch up, build a fire, and cook something could be so <laughs> successful? My missus thinks I'm mad when I watch them, but it's like one is there with you just chilling. Any plans for reviews on the camping kit? Uh, I'm, I'm still, look, look. I have four videos on this channel and it's already overtaken my Motorfuels channel. Wow. And I, I just, and, wow. I, and I, I know in, in a month, in one month, I've been on Motorfuels for two and a half years and uh, Seriously? I don't even know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, well, when was it? 20, the start of 2020 is when I started Motorfuels YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And now we're halfway through 2022. And I literally started this camping, um, this camping thing up just last month. Wow. Why is that? Why do you think that is? I I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> That's what I mean about the whole, like, you know, you're, you're trying to research keywords, keyword, you know yeah. what I mean, and all this stuff yeah. and what your next topic's going to be about. Literally, all I'm doing is I, I put a cam set up a camera on a tripod, yeah. hit record, I ride mm -hmm. my bike, and then I hop off, move the tripod, reload, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it's work. It's still work. But it's it's way less like pre-production and then post-editing, everything's linear. So then you just sort yeah. of chuck it in your timeline and you can just edit. And then, so to answer the, the whole reviews question, I think it will happen. I've been trying to work out how I want to do it. If I want to do the like reviews all on Motofills and keep Motofills the talking one and then mm -hmm. literally have my Rob Hamilton channel, um, purely just ASMR camping yeah. and just leave it as that. Or if I should review it in an ASMR sort of style as well and just have text mm. coming up. I'm not sure. Because I think the whole, the, the, like one of the reasons why the channel is going well as well is because it's so universal. You don't need to understand English to be able to watch these videos and you can relate because it's literally nature. You yeah. know what I mean? And like if yeah. you 
people that don't even ride bikes are watching my videos because they love camping and they love just listening to nature. You don't even need to be watching it. You could might have headphones on and you just go yeah. on about your day and you just literally have the sound of fire or like a river running or wind blowing, you know what I mean? And it just relaxes yeah. people. People have stressful days um, and and that just relaxes them, makes them sleep easier. So I don't know. I don't know how I want to do this. I don't know yet. It's just happened so fast. I'm still mm. organizing the channel, really. Um, but yeah, to, to answer your question, I'm not sure. <laughs> now, do, do you, when you look at your, your, ana, I'll get a bit technical here. When you look at your analytics for the ASMR channel, the camping channel, do you find your viewer retention is much higher than that compared to it's the motor so fields? Low. It's so is low. It? Yeah, that's why. That's what I mean about stuff. The analytics. I don't. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, I get higher can't... retention on my motor yeah. stuff. A hundred percent. Because they say like all all these how to grow your YouTube channel. All these channels, they're all saying now you need like eighty percent, ninety percent viewer retention. I'm like, I don't think I've ever had that. I think if I Not hit sixty percent, I'm over the moon. If I get like a sixty percent, my like forty five, maybe high forties at times. Uh, yeah. That's on a good day, you know. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. that's so, interesting. So, so my second video that's now cracked one point four million views. My second wow. video. That's at like fourteen point three percent retention, and that's still getting a thousand views an hour. Jesus, I know. And, and that's same crazy. with my other videos. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They start off at like thirty percent, and then they just yeah. drop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as they get pushed out, like it's so weird. I don't know, like, and that's where I'm just like, stuff. What anyone says, it mm. just doesn't matter. No one knows the algorithm. Yeah, I don't even think YouTube knows the damn algorithm. <laughs> no, that, that's true. And, and I like to me at the moment, it feels like it's changed in the last three or four months. It feels like it's changed because I've noticed my channels changed analytics and everything. I, I definitely need to stop looking at the analytics for sure because it's a wormhole, isn't it? You just end up in <laughs> it. It is. Why? Oh, yeah. why? Why did this one do yeah. so well? And did the same to yeah. this one? That's not doing so well. And it's almost like the analytics don't tell you what people actually want. Because no. I look at the analytics and think, oh, maybe they want this style of vid. And then when I speak to like my community mates that, that follow the channel, they're like, no, 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 we like these type of vids. And I'm like, yeah, but they're nose bomb. Those vids are nose bomb. No, no, no. They're the ones. That's why we follow. We like those vids. Like, yeah. Oh, funny, I, don't hey. care. <laughs> I know. That's what I mean. Just do what you want to do, man. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what it comes down to. You're YouTube and you know what I mean? You live in the dream. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's that I think that is incredibly important. Do what you want to do. Definitely, because it keeps the passion yeah. going. It, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. It? Yeah. You'll burn yourself out and just not enjoy totally. it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin's got another little add-on on his question there. He said, um, "Do you also have any tips on what you take food-wise or for keeping it full, uh, keeping it cool, like the practicalities of of camping?" How'd yeah, you, so you I got, um, out? I um I bought myself a, a pretty decent um soft cooler bag just a couple of episodes ago before that i was literally just using like we're in winter um i was using just like bubble wrap and just having a cooler bag in there and i was yeah. keeping it i was keeping my beers cool enough you know <laughs> um but if it was summer i would have been destroyed you know like there's no no chance but this this cooler bag's really good so i just bought one of those which i'm really happy about works really well mm -hmm. um for food yeah it, it is tricky so i've got myself like i use notion if you're familiar with um like I, with my even my YouTube channels, I did a whole thing on Notion and how I plan all my videos and everything like that. So uh -huh. Notion's an organizational sort of tool or app. Right. It's free. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I've made a whole new one up that's full on camping, and I have, I have it behind me right now. <laughs> it has um, the location, what I'm going to be eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. and then like the moonrise, the moonset time, it's what size moon it's going to be, sunrise, sunset. Um, if I got reception, all these all these little things that I can just punch in, and then I know wow. exactly what I've got. Yeah. And then for my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I have a whole list of recipes uh -huh. put into the system. So then, just say I want, I don't know, like steak and veggies. I click on steak and veggies, and then it tells me what I need to buy from the shops. And then it's just like steak, like it's asparagus, mushrooms, and blah blah blah. Um, and then I can mix and match everything as well. So then I need to sort of think about, um, okay, so if I'm going to be Let's say um, it was there was night two uh, on, on my camping series. Um, I was making burgers, and I was also making um, uh, bacon and egg like muffins as well the next day. Yeah. So then I used the same sort of like style of bread for the muffins as I did with the burgers. So you just sort of like you know utilizing the same sort yeah. of 
you know, uh, ingredients. Um, and then also thinking about weight because weight is the biggest thing that you need to keep down on, you know, on, especially my bike, like your bikes, like yeah. it's, it's built for that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? With mine, I've got to literally pack as light as I can and yep. really think about how I'm going to be doing that as well. And having this little thing that I've got, um, yeah, listed out now, I think it's, it's actually nice to be able to see everything in front of me and think, okay, I'm not going to take a can of soup with me this time because I'm taking something else that's heavy for another meal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've got to think, I've got to think a little bit differently. Um, you are just, very just, sorry apologies go on no that's right yeah it's just keeping that keeping that balance yeah, yeah. You, you're you're obviously a very analytically uh logic logic logically pro progressive minded person you know like you you obviously put a lot of thought into the um oh god what, what i can't even think it's got i've not had a beer i can't think <laughs> yeah, do you know right. what i mean like you, you you're breaking everything down into all the different logical steps and what do you need in order to do that I, I, that's yeah. great i'm not like that i i used to sure. be and i've yeah. found as i've got older I, I kind of i seem to adopt the fuck it we'll just we'll just wing it attitude and that's not yeah, always great sure. <laughs> you know i mean? used to be like that i used to do that and that's cool yeah. but then it just it just destroyed me i, I just didn't know what the hell i was taking didn't know yeah, what I packed. yeah yeah so do you do you do that like in terms of filming your vids as well do you do you break things down into right i know exactly what shot i want so you, do you make a shot list for for all the different sequences and transitions and things not for the camping video mm -hmm. um for the camping video i've, I've been thinking about it though because <laughs> mm. i i literally I, I overshoot which is good and bad because i literally yeah. went through like 256 gigs worth of footage and yeah. i've got it i just bought a new camera as well so it's all 4k now before yeah. i was recording in 1080 and it used like 48 gigs so now yeah. i've got to be careful about how much i shoot um yeah so i don't have a shot list or anything i sort of like um it may be like every couple of hours i'll run around and get some b-roll of nature and like yeah. obviously like the time of day helps as well so if i'm setting up my tent it might just cut to a tree with some clouds in the background and then it comes back to me and the tent's all set up and I'm doing yeah. something else, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll do those whole all those B-roll things in one hit. So I'll just like film some water, film some trees, birds, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I'll go about and keep doing what I'm doing. Um, but with Moto Fuels, yeah, I fully I I write <laughs> I write everything. I, I research. So let's doing the cardo stuff as well. Like I watched your videos and was mm -hmm. taking notes. I watched about five videos. Um, I take notes. I look at uh, other people's questions that they're asking, like your comments as well, and I try yeah. to implement them in my yeah. in my research. And then I come up with a script, and then from the script, I have a full on shot list. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then away we go. Me again, folks. Just another shout out for this week's sponsors, who are the Influencer Store. The Influencer Store helps you build your brand, big or small, providing you with a solution and apparel. We help you to increase your fan base while supporting you with starting your own influencer clothing line with nothing more than just an idea or design, and there are no hidden costs. For more info, come check us out at theinfluencerstore.co.uk or drop us an email or drop us an email at online at influencerstore.co.uk for more information. And now if you've got any of my merch over at teapot1.com, all of that is handed by Roger and Charlotte over at the Influencer Store. It's really good quality. It's British made. That's why I've gone with them. So a huge thanks to the Influencer Store. Lastly, folks, this is just one from me. It's a massive shout out to each and every one of you who's listened to the podcast, each and every one of you that watches the vids, both here and across on the main Teapot One channel. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you very much for engaging in the comments, uh, liking and sharing the social media stuff, liking and sharing the vids. Sharing vids is a huge thing really is you've got no idea how much that helps you bump you up in the algorithm so if you enjoy what you watch what you listen to share it amongst all your mates and thank you very much for all those of you over in the clan on patreon not much i can say except you know a heartfelt thank you you folks go that extra mile and i really do appreciate it i couldn't do this without your support if you fancy checking that out head to patreon.com forward slash teapot one okay then Let's get back to the chat. Wow. Yeah, I definitely need to put more thought in. I, 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 my bike stuff, 
I just wing. I just wing that. Maybe the review. Yeah, the review type stuff. I'll I'll just use notes and I'll 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 write down like okay for the intro. I want to say I want to say something like this, you know. And then for the main blurb, all right, here's some like bullet yeah, points sure. as to what I need. So I just I make sure that I cover it. But I've never really shot. A, I've never really written down like a shot list. I think I just try and keep it in my head. But then it's so easy to forget, isn't it? And not not tick off that that short list Absolutely. and then you come to edit and you're like, yeah. ah, shit, you, I wish you, I... <laughs> you, you need to you need to check <laughs> you need to check out my video man <laughs> you, you I, will benefit from it trust me <laughs> I, I remember I remember watching it and just thinking oh my god you put so you put so much thought into your videos because I was like I don't think of any of that yeah. I don't need that app I don't I don't think of that <laughs> 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 all right, I'll have to watch ideas. That. If an idea pops in your yeah. head, you can just write it down. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah, all there. I'll... You can download the template as well. Right. Lovely. I'll have another look at that then. Nice one. Yeah. Nice. Right. Uh, next one. Alan Duncan. Uh, excellent. I've been following Rob for quite some time, and I have to say, I love his custom Triumph Scr- Scrambler 900. Sounds amazing. That that bike sounds lovely in your vids. It's <laughs> literally the reason why I bought it. Yeah. yeah. yeah beautiful. <laughs> also, love his video editing photography work. A question for Rob. I loved your outback trip you did on the Scrambler. Those Zards sound killer with those. Uh, those Zards sound killer with those custom headers you you had made. What journey would you undertake anywhere in the world if you had the opportunity? I live in America now, and I have a dream to buy a bike on the East Coast and ride it home to the Pacific Northwest where I live. All right, then trip anywhere. Where'd you go? Crap. Um. Oh, there's just so many. Hey. Uh. Hmm. <clears throat> this is this is a thinking one because <laughs> yep. uh, well, like the first the first thing when I when I first started riding back in 2014, I thought around Australia would be awesome. I need mm-hmm. I needed to be able to be funded somehow, which now that's sort of happening with mm-hmm. the whole new camping thing because I can literally just camp around Australia now and it can be yep. fully you know funded. Um, I haven't really thought about like where I really, because I, then I'll just get itchy, you know what I mean? I get all depressed and I'm like, oh, I really want to go over to, you know, Norway and ride around there, but I can't because whatever reasons. Um, so yeah, I, I, I haven't really, I haven't really looked into it that much as much as I should. I've, I've got Australia first. I want to do Australia. Australia is yeah. humongous and there is so much to see here. We've got snowy mountains, we have desert and everything in between, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I want to, I really want to explore Australia, like especially Western Australia. I've only flown, flown to Perth, done a few gigs there. Um, but Western Australia is literally like half of Australia yeah. and it has incredible scenery and landscapes and everything. Um, and then from there, I don't know, like I've been to Switzerland. I played at Montreux Jazz Fest for two weeks and I went riding with um, a crew there. I just, I reached out to them and they took me for a ride. It's literally the first video on my YouTube channel. Me riding through Switzerland on a BMW R80, old school, like 1978 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And that was one of the best rides of my life. Like Lake Geneva, right there, riding yeah. through the bloody mountains. It was so nice. Um, so anywhere in Switzerland, <laughs> I'm yeah. 100% down for. But any, like, you know, I don't know, just just anywhere. <laughs> just get me out there. The, the, the Swiss, well, the Alps, the whole Alpine region there, like Austria, Northern Italy, parts of Slovenia, Switzerland, all, all those areas there up in the mountains. It's just, it's breathtaking when you see it, isn't yeah. it? If you, if you catch yeah. it in the right light, right conditions, it, it's like artwork in front of you. It's like, th- that can't be real. Someone's, someone's painted ah, that or, yeah. or done it in Photoshop. It's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. The colour of the water and the lakes, you know, when you get that beautiful, like, aqua water. deep. Oh, Gorgeous. Yeah, even yeah. just the South Island of New Zealand, I'd love to. Um, mm. I'd love to ride around that. You know what I mean? Have yeah. you seen? Just it looks like Switzerland, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a, an uncle that emigrated out to the North Island about 40 odd years ago now. And he's he's continually saying, because he came up to see us, he's from England, but he came up to Scotland to see us before he emigrated. And he, he he's like, you know, you'll love it over here. He said, it's it's Scotland on steroids. You'll just, you'll love uh, it. You'll absolutely love it. So I, I wanted, when I did the world trip, I wanted to go to, to New Zealand, but I, I, I didn't have the money. I ran out of money and time, so I had to move from from Oz across to the Americas and start doing that. So I'd love to go uh, back sure. to. I'd love to go and do New Zealand one day for sure. Yeah, and I've heard Tassie yeah, is absolutely. awesome as well. Tasmania, I've heard yeah, that's, that's right, man. Yeah, that's yeah. that's like a hundred percent going to be. It's the the um the spirit of Tasmania, the boat. 
You can literally yeah. get a boat and you just go over there overnight and boom, you're in Tassie with your bike. Happy days. <laughs> That'll be happening to do very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nice. Nice. <laughs> right. I'm conscious of time here. Uh, next one, Lee Vigor. Hi, both. Uh, hi, both. Hope you're well. Two of my favorite YouTubers in one place. Thanks very much. Cheers, Lee. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. It's always a good thing to question to... Sorry, what's that? In one place. It's always a good thing question to both. Question to both. If you could collaborate with anyone, who would it be and why? I think we're going to have exactly the same one here. Uh, well, like Peter McKinnon. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always imagine him reaching out and just being like, hey, man, love your stuff. Yeah. I'm going to be in Australia soon. Want to do something? <laughs> it, it's amazing because yes. I remember I remember McKinnon when he first started. I saw I properly started on YouTube end of 2016 I think it was and I remember I remember when McKinnon came on my radar early 2017 he had I think he had about I think I had about 10 15,000 subs by that point and I think he had seven and I was like oh, all right yeah. roughly about the same size all right and then all of a sudden he had 14 and 80 and then 100 and it was just like oh my god this guy is taking off and you look at him now he's got like what five million or something stupid? I think five million. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. wow! But just sensational, isn't it? He, he took YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Casey Casey Neistat for me was the one that got me into YouTube, into moto, into vlogging, and then sure. McKinnon has just taken that to a whole new level. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So with yeah, so for me, I joined when he had thirty thousand subs, mm. um, and that was when I first put my camera because I was just like how to use camera settings you know yeah, yeah. and then i just saw his video come up i was just like oh check this guy out mm -hmm. and then like yeah and then and then away we go from there and obviously i took a lot from from his videos he, he inspired me a lot and i think he, he inspires literally so many people yeah um and then as good as as good as it is like people write to me being like you're basically the aussie peter mckinnon you know like and first i was like oh yeah that's awesome but now i'm just yeah. like i want my own style i want to be known yeah. for rob hamilton you know what i mean like yeah, not yeah. For peter mckinnon um, i i I think you do have your. I do. I'm not just. I'm not just buttering your arse here. I do think you have your own <laughs> style for sure. Like you can. You can see the McKinnon influence for sure. And I would yep. love to be. You. You know. You've got a much higher understanding of, plainly, of camera settings and editing than than I do. Because I can. I can see a lot of the McKinnon influence. But you've definitely got your own. You've definitely got your own vibe going on there. Like you so, know, it's one of your vids when you see it. Even without, even your ASMR stuff, you know that's you. Even if you don't see you, it's yeah, the way, right, okay. the way you color grade it, the way you edit it. It's it, it's definitely your style. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's good. Thanks, man. That that makes no, me feel a bit better. No, no worries. No worries. <laughs> uh, who else we got there? Simon Lewis. Good day, Bruce and Rob. Wow, it's like watching an Aussie version of Teapot One. <laughs> oh yeah, cheers. <laughs> Superb reviews and videos. So, Australia is a pretty big place. I know from doing the Indian Pacific train, it's four days, three nights, Perth to Sydney. Where there, where's the one place in Oz you've not yet got to on the bike yet, and why that place? Ah, oh, well, you've said that West Australia. Is that is that well, still the place? Well, I there's been a lot. I haven't, I've done, uh, like I've done New South Wales, obviously. I've done a big mm -hmm. loop around New South Wales, which is awesome. Done down Jindabyne and everything. Now I'm in Victoria. I've still, I'm like my camping videos. I'm literally like doing circles, you know what I mean? And just expanding out and further yeah, and further yeah. and further. Yeah. We've got the Grampians. The Grampians are apparently stunning. I haven't been mm -hmm. there. Um, we've got all the way down uh at the bottom of victoria or the great ocean road and everything i still haven't done yeah. the full great ocean road so I mean, my family half my family lives in south australia mm -hmm. since since i moved here it's just been i've been you know you're moving interstate it's it's there's a bit of pressure you know what i mean like and moving into a warehouse as well like setting all this up it all took time so you know and money's money's a thing that you need to consider with business yeah. and all that as well yeah um so it took me a while to get established but now i'm established so and and after winter, I'm going to be riding down the Great Ocean Road, ride around, camp out maybe for two nights, Man. and then visit my family in South Australia. So then I'll be able to ride around South Australia as well. Um, yeah. I would love to ride literally, yeah, like Western Australia and everything, but also through Northern Territory. I know it's it's that's brutal. Like it's brutal land out in the middle of this, like literally in the middle of Australia, full on des desert. Um, <laughs> But like to just like just imagine riding past Uluru and just seeing Ayers Rock, yeah, yeah, and you know what I mean, like in the distance yeah. and the Olgas and everything like that. I've been there. I've I've climbed Ayers Rock years ago, 
Um, but yeah, being like doing it on a bike would be incredible. And Darwin's yeah. Darwin's like you've been there. It's it's the most Aussie like outback you can. It's sort wild, of get. Like, man. That, yeah, yeah. That is, man. <laughs> I've, I've I've gone to I've been there and I like a tour up there. Actually, um, I supported John Farnham. You know John Farnham? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I you supported did. him at the V8s. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Which was awesome. Like, he's a yeah, awesome guy. Um, anyways, I was up there and I was ordering a, um, uh, what's it like an enchilada from a from a Mexican joint, and yep. she literally just said in like the most bogan accent, just we like any lens in that, and I was like. <laughs> And I, I'm Australian, and I didn't understand what you just said. But just, you know, just asking if I wanted any lettuce on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of, speaking the, of organ, you, sorry, apologies to interrupt, Ray. It's this this delay thing going on here. Um, yeah, that's true. Do you have you met Million Dollar Bogan, Dan Hayes, Daniel Hayes? I haven't met him. Have I haven't you met not? Him. No. I'd love to though. Hopefully, I just see him on the road. It's like, hey. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've, I've, I was trying to get him on here, but I can't. I can never get any reply from him. I, the, sure. I know he's just come over. He was over in the UK about a month or two ago, and loads of people went up and met up with him. I, I couldn't get up there sadly, but loads of people went up and they were like, ah, oh, you need to get on this podcast. And he was like, yeah, uh, sure, sure. And he's, what I just can't, he? I can't, I can't touch him with him at all. Ah, uh, sure. He's a character. Hey, he's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think he's one of those love him or hate him type characters, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, right, we've got ten minutes. Um, time is flying, mate. I know, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Simon also says, "What brand of beer do you take?" What brand of beer? Yeah. Um, my uh, my favorite's Newtowner, so it's Young Henry's. That's an Australian brand. It's okay. a full on. It's um, brewed in Merrickville in um, in Sydney, oh, okay. which is not far. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. love it. I love it. To death. But oh. in 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 Melbourne, it's it's not as it's not as popular because I'm in Melbourne. Um, so now, what do I drink here? Uh, Pirates Life. <laughs> wow. Good what day. happened to Castle Main Forex? That's all I remember. Uh, from Australia. Yeah, that's Queensland, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't drink that mid strength crap. <laughs> <laughs> right, last one from the clan, <laughs> Louise Warsfold. Morning. I hope it's I hope all is well down under. Uh, I love visiting Sydney and surfing on Manly Beach. With the Commonwealth Games currently underway, showcasing different sports to the Olympics, it got me thinking, what non-motorised motorized everyday task or contest from school would you int introduce into the Olympics and what nation would be the best at it? <laughs> Her herself, she would have to do marbles. That's what she was like. Right, so school, <laughs> school sport or contest... What would you put into the Olympics? <laughs> what a random question! That what is, a random question! Wait, can you can you just ask that again? What right. what, what, <laughs> what non motorized everyday task or contest from school would you introduce into the Olympics, and what oh. nation would be the best? Okay, um, pea shooting. <laughs> be the pea shooter. Shoot up yeah, the paper. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I guess um, any native indigenous <laughs> country, <laughs> they would absolutely slay at that. Because they're, they're bound to be good at that sort of stuff. Must be. Must yeah, that's be. Right. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, how did you think of that so quickly? The, oh, yeah, oh. I, I don't know. I, I just thought of things that we did at school when PG yeah, yeah, was yeah. one of them. Or just yeah. like the rubber band with the paper. The oh yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Something yeah, yeah. Target, something targeting. You can put a target up. That's an Olympic game. So basically, you were a hooligan <laughs> at school, Rob. Is that right? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a public school, so yeah, and self defence. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't even think of that one, Louise. I can't even think. It'd take me forever, um, dude. Are you all right for like another five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Cool, because uh, yeah. most of the time, uh, like we all. With the shorter ones, I tend only to get through the Patreon questions, and then people uh, have sure. questions on like the public social media. They're like, "Oh, when well, we never get our questions asked." Right? Uh, yeah, and I go for it. Go for it. I'll pop across to uh, Instagram now, folks. That's Teapot One Insta. Uh, first one, Mega Kane eighty four. My question: Moto feels. What made you start doing the silent vlogs? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I I struggled falling asleep. I always have since high school, um, and the only thing to get me to fall asleep, and I, I feel like this has become a full-on trend now. I listen to Rain 
It's literally yeah. called Rain on a Car Roof. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've listened to that for, I reckon, 13 years now. Just that same sound every single night. Nature, wow. you know what I mean? Like just, mm-hmm. just helps me, helps me fall asleep. Um, and then I came across uh, a YouTube channel called Go 4x4. And he's a, 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 a Brisbane guy. He's, oh, he's, in, he's in Brisbane, Australia. And he's got a, he's got a Jeep and he's, he's pretty much doing the exact same thing. Like, or I'm doing the exact same thing as him where it's just full on nature. And as soon as I came across his channel, like that was it. I was, I've been, you know what I mean? Like the start of the year, I, I stumbled across it and I was just like, this is incredible. Mm. And I'd fall asleep on the couch or I'd just be laying in bed and I just have it there and I don't even have the phone on and I just close my eyes and I'm listening to him just going about his, his day really. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, camping, doing solo camping is something that I've or like, or I always wanted to do. Um, I, I went out with Kinga, um, on her bike. Saw that. Yeah, yeah. 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 She, she's awesome, man. She's so cool. Um, and I like, I admire her, you know what I mean? Like she's like full on hero. Her doing the whole around the world thing is like mind blowing. Cause I was just too scared to go out and go camping by myself. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> I'll just be like, I need purpose. You know what I mean? If I'm going to go out camping, I can't just go, all right, there's my fire and just sit there and just look yeah. at the fire. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I need to be doing something. I'm thinking about something like I want to capture this and I want to share it with people. Yeah. Um, and so after watching, uh, like literally every single one of um, go four by fours camping videos, I don't even know the guy's name. Um, I was just like, okay, well, you know, the, if I do something like this and I have it based around my motorcycle, I'm doing moto camping and I'm shooting it cinematically. You know what I mean? Like mm. I feel like with moto fields, I do so many tutorials on how to get awesome quality and everything, but I'm not really doing it myself for anything. Yeah. yeah. And I thought this is good for me to be able to just put aside all the tutorial stuff and literally shoot the way I want to shoot in a, in a story with, like, without any talking either. There's no script or anything like that. And I can just mm. literally capture the essence of the visuals and the sounds that I'm experiencing at the same time. And hopefully, um, help other people that might struggle to relax or have anxiety issues mm. or, um, or well, can't go into nature. Maybe, you know, they're, they're, they're crippled or something like, you mm. know what I mean? Like that maybe they just yeah, can't yeah. physically go out into nature. I want to bring that to them in the best possible way. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so like wearing headphones and watching my videos, that's the best way to experience that. And that's, that's basically what I wanted to do to achieve is to help people be in nature again because nature resonates with in, with me like uh, I, I, in 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 um the i think it was like the second episode of the around the backyard tour or the third the sunset oh, we we're in the middle of new south wales in the middle of nowhere mungo national park mm-hmm. the sun was setting and like this is the first time it's ever happened to me as well man i was doing a drone tracking shot with my mate nick and he was so far away and then I stopped and then he just flew the drone back. And then I just, I just turned around and I just saw this wall of natural beauty, like purple colors, blue colors, orange. And I just like, I just fully just became overwhelmed with emotion. I had to turn off my bike and I had to just sit in it. And then I literally just bawled my eyes out. It was, wow. it was just something that really just, and in, um, in the night three with the sunrise, on my camping video, I, again, I just bawled my eyes out. It's something that yeah. I just, I love witnessing. It's it's something that happens all the time, but we all, we take it for granted because we're mm. busy. You know what I mean? Like we got to cook, yeah. we got to claim, we're kids, whatever. Um, and so, so being able to capture these moments and bring it into people's literal like living rooms yeah. is something that I I think is special, and that people need to remember that nature is literally everything. Like it's all that we have. You know mm. what I mean? And the way the things are going, it's going. You know things have gone pretty bad. I don't want to go down too much of this path, but yeah. like um, in terms of um, preserving nature and, and protecting what we have now before mm-hmm. we destroy literally everything, like the Amazon's yeah. getting small, like all that sort of stuff. Um, I want to, I want to make people aware that we need to protect what we have now because mm. otherwise it's all going to be gone. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. That, that sort of deep rooted connection with nature, it's, I, I I get those feelings when I see the ocean, and I'm not like I'm not uh, I'm not right. a sailor. I'm not I don't go scuba diving. I don't swim in this. I don't do anything. Like, I don't I don't even live near the ocean here where I am now. But whenever wherever I am, whenever I see the ocean, it, there's just some sort of you feel at home. Like I I just feel like ah, oh, 
you know. So, He's connected ah, again, man. We're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're home. We're all right now. It's a weird feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, funny you said that about Nick, because the next question, Uncle Bob's biker life, he said, are you going to do another crazy fun vlog with Nick, the Triumph 1050 dude? Well, I've moved to Melbourne. Nick's in Sydney still. <laughs> Nick's got a full-time job. So I... Like, yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, the door's always open. There's always a, a possibility. We're, we're still in contact. We're still very good mates, obviously. Mm. Um, next time I'll be planning the trip. Mm. So he, he, planned, he, planned <laughs> the, he planned how far we're going to go and all this. He's like, we'll do it, man, we'll do it. And next minute yeah. we're like riding nine hours every day is exhausting. Yeah. Like we weren't yeah. able to take everything in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Like there will definitely be future. I don't know when. But yeah, absolutely. The door's open there. Sounds like that'll be a yeah. People forget how big Australia is as well, I think, especially over here in the UK. Like right. Australia is just it's enormous. It's it is such <laughs> yeah. a huge mass of land. And you think, yeah. well, it's just over in Sydney, just jump over there. It's a long way. That's it's a, a long, long way. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, dude, there's loads more questions, but I appreciate time's time's up now. Um that's all, right, all right. Let's just rock for another five minutes more. We got, let's sure. go for another five. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah let's see it. if we can get through some of these uh, Insta questions. Uh, right. VFR tourist. Myself, having ridden every state in the USA except Hawaii, and I'm looking for a place to go next. Which is a better place to ride a motorcycle, Scotland or Australia? <laughs> oh, just chuck that grenade in, why don't you? All right. <laughs> Have you have you've not ridden Scotland, have you? I've never been to Scotland. Right. Think of Switzerland, but slightly disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland's beautiful. Scotland's gorgeous, but it can it cannot compete with Switzerland at all. Right, okay. But there are um, some stunning places. Yeah, so I think um, I've, I've actually got a mate that's over there now. His, his dad's got an enormous farm, and it, I, I can't stop looking at all the, the footage. You guys have yeah. ridiculous sunsets. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like you you, uh, you you probably get to experience more of Scotland in a shorter amount of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with Australia, yeah. like we have some ridiculously stunning beaches, and you know. Um, um, what do you call it? Inland, inland, you know, um, scenery and everything like that. But by the time you get there, it's that's a whole day of just yeah. riding down a dead straight road before you get to see anything. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in Scotland, you'd be, you'd be able to just take more in and enjoy shorter trips while yeah, doing you, more. Maybe I guess you, you you can. I mean, like I, there's a famous road or or sequence of roads in Scotland called the North Coast Five Hundred. It's like the tourist the tourist route takes you right up across, you know, all up the west coast of Scotland, across the top, and then sort of back down through the middle almost. You know, it's yeah. it, it sort of ticks all the tourist spots or the main ones. Sure. So it's called North yeah. Coast Five Hundred. And people go up there and do like three, four, five, six, seven day trips up there. But you can do it in a day. Like I, I went up and did it. Oh, in like, well, okay. It's like sixteen hours or eighteen hours. You can do it. You don't get to see anything, but you can do it. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, but I think I think the biggest benefit with Scotland is that we haven't got anything that eats you. Whereas in Australia, from the smallest spider spider to the <laughs> the biggest salty, everything's going to bite you, sting you, and kill you over there. <laughs> I've actually had so many comments, people just being like, you're crazy camping in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. I feel like it's not that bad. Like, yeah, there's spiders. <laughs> just checking around. And yeah, the yeah, spiders yeah. are... <laughs> and they, they are monstrous. They're ridiculous. Um, uh, and, and then when I do to go to different countries, I'm like, oh, that's right. There's yeah. nothing crazy here. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> like, I remember... That's a benefit. Like camping especially up in the north coming from darwin before I, I got to like townsville and stuff when you camped at night like even the locals would be like you know don't don't camp there you're gonna get crocs or yeah, like crocs are a big thing especially up yeah, there yeah yeah and if you're anywhere near the coast like even near like a, a an estuary <laughs> yeah. or something they're like no you'll get salties coming in and we're like yeah now what doesn't kill you over here <laughs> like, yeah i know <laughs> yeah that's right um yeah if like I, even for myself personally, like for the summer, the summer camping episodes, I'm a little bit nervous about just because, well, the one, the one is the king brown snake. Yeah, that's one that you just did not want to get bitten by or even see. You know what I mean? Like you, you, yeah. you'll be done before anything can come and help you. 
Um, yeah. So yeah. So maybe even just for that fact, just Scotland. <laughs> 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 but we've got we've got something called the midge over here, midges in Scotland. Now you know how you get your big you get big mozzies and big flies in Australia, don't they? I, I just remember yeah. flies up in the north, unbearable. Sand flies. Yeah, yeah. Mm. well, just just big fly. Like you, if you stopped at the side of the road, even you know to take a breather. I would maybe it's because I'm fat wearing a, a leather suit, so I was like di- ringing the dinner bell for him. But you sure. just have these flies, boom, on you, and you couldn't breathe because oh, they're yeah, everywhere. Right. Yeah, yeah, you need to wear, sc- um, yeah, the mesh. <laughs> yeah, in Scotland, right. we have a thing called midgy, which is it is it sounds totally innocuous. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny like mosquito, or really small, they're like little black dots. Oh, wow. But you get them by the hundreds of thousands. They swarm. So you just get this cloud Ooh. and they're everywhere. They just bite the shit out of you. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. That's but it's crazy. weird. I mean, do, do you guys do you guys have so leeches over there? Yeah, you do, but they're not they're not like, you know, then they're, they're not like what you well, do you get them where you if you walk in the mm-hmm. if you go walking or swimming, they'll attached to you. I've never I've never yeah. known anyone get that. <laughs> In Scotland, but there are leeches, but not, not like right. Okay, because I, I had my first encounter in my latest video. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. I was I was cooking dinner, and literally, I, it dropped off and crawled into my knife, and I was like, "What yeah. the hell is this?" And oh. then, and then I, I was I was rubbing around my neck, and I looked at my hand; it's covered in blood. Yeah. And and I had no idea, like a full on leech. And then I looked at my footage and photos, and I just had a leech on my neck, just sucking away. Jesus, that's made me start doing this. Look, I know, yeah, and whole... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't we haven't really got anything like that in Scotland. We got well, there's gold eagles now. People don't believe me, oh, but awesome. we've got there's golden eagles up there. And I don't live in Scotland anymore. I'm down in England. But um, you know, I've taken my wife up to to Scotland. We've done a road trip, and she didn't believe that there would be gold eagles up there. And we saw two, three, I think, in, in the week that we were up there. Just sat wow. on a fence post at the side of the road. It's beautiful, beautiful. Oh, that's birds. awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, it's gorgeous. Right, you need to do a Scotland trip. You got to come over, do one. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, absolutely. <laughs> right, dude, I appreciate it's home time for you, so I'll I'll, I'll let you slide off. Um, Rob, thanks so much for coming on, mate. I really, really do appreciate you spending the, the time on the chat with pleasure. us. Before yeah. before you go, the floor's yours. Plug anything you like. Give any shout outs you like. Over to you, mate. Sure. Um, uh. I have a new camping channel. <laughs> Go and check it out. It's Rob Hamilton. Just type in Rob Hamilton on YouTube and I'm literally like, I'll fill up your screen with my four <laughs> videos. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. Um, and uh, Moto Fuels, that's always going to be plugging away in the background. Obviously, now the videos are going to be chilling out a little bit just because I need to go where, um, you know, the – the YouTube sort of taken me yeah. um, and editing takes a lot of time and I mm-hmm. need to focus my time into, into the right places, but Moto feels will always be there a hundred percent. So that's Moto feels on YouTube and then Moto underscore feels with a Z on Instagram. Um, and shout out, shout out to my girlfriend, Romina and my mum, And um, yeah, that's it. Mega. Thanks so folks, much for watching. <laughs> <laughs> folks, I'll leave all, all the links to Rob's socials, his channels, and uh, all the socials. They'll all be down below. So if you listen to the podcast, make sure you check out show notes. And if you're listening, if you're watching the vids, have a look at the description. Make sure you give them a like, follow, subscribe, ding dong the bell. Oh, you know the jazz. Make sure you do it. Dude, safe journey home. Thanks again for coming Thank on. Thank you so much. And, uh, My pleasure. Thank you, know, you for having me. If our paths ever cross, it would be great to, to do some filming with you or just even go out for a ride, mate. Love to. It's going to happen. It'll happen for sure. I guarantee Mate, it. If you're coming over, if you're coming over UK, let me know for sure. And we'll sort absolutely. it out. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, Sweet. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, keep doing your thing. Get on out there whenever you can. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha! Dude, thanks so much, man. I'm awesome, sorry that man. was so rushed.